welcome to this overview of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18. In the age to come, eternal life. This chapter presents seven proofs of everlasting life. First, cry out to God till Jesus come. Humble ourselves before God. Receive life by simple faith. Come, follow me. Follow Jesus at all costs. Believe in Jesus' death and resurrection. And believe in Jesus, the Messiah. During this lesson, discover at least one new idea, a truth to believe, a promise to claim, or a command to obey. Cry out to God for justice. Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, so that she won't eventually come and attack me or wear me out. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. I will see to it that she gets justice. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? What is the main faith task of Christians? What do American churches do least? We humble ourselves before God. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. In this story, Luke translates the term have mercy with the Greek term hilaskomai and justified before God with the Greek term dikaioo. This language is borrowed from the Apostle Paul. All are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood. Sacrifice of atonement is the noun form of the verb hilaskomai. There are many voices on the internet telling you that Jesus preached one thing and that the Apostle Paul created another thing called Christianity. However, here in the Gospel, they are the same. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. 
One note about religious folk. First, they wash themselves and wear nice clothes. Secondly, they often perform rituals and say certain prayers. They feel proud of themselves and despise other faiths. Yet, they may turn violent when they feel offended. We, however, receive life by simple faith. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Well, what quality of children must we have? And at what age can children believe in Jesus? At what age do children receive the Holy Spirit? At what age can children serve the Lord? And where do little children go if they die before they grow up? Jesus said, Come, follow me. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, Jesus answered, You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and your mother. Well, all these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Before we continue, this needle was discovered in Siberia's Denisova cave, made of an unidentified bird bone measuring just under three inches long and is thought by paleontologists to date back some 50,000 years. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. So why did Jesus require this man to sell everything but not require it of others. Ancient philosophers used to test their students in the same way. Does poverty ensure everlasting life? Does keeping the rules ensure life? What was the one thing that this man lacked for everlasting life? And what is the lasting lesson we must learn? Well, we must follow Jesus at all costs. Those who heard this asked, Well, who then can be saved? We all have stuff and we like our stuff. Well, Jesus replied, What is impossible with man is possible with God. So Peter said to him, Well, we have left all we had to follow you. So what advantages come to real Christians? Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, No one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this life 
and in the age to come, eternal life. Well, what do we get in this age? And when will we get it? Peter wrote, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. You may not see much of it before then. All of this comes to us through Jesus' death and resurrection. Remember, Jesus was beaten with a Roman scourge before he was crucified. Jesus took the twelve aside and told them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. But on the third day, he will rise again. The disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. So why did they not understand any of this? Perhaps they expected the Messiah to be a great king. Others might say, well, it was my servant who, Isaiah said, would suffer, not the Son of Man. And of course the Holy Spirit had not yet come to them. So, let us trust in Jesus the Messiah. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked it what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. So he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, what is significant about the title Son of David. Well, this title was reserved for the Messiah. Those who led the way rebuked the blind man and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Remember, we follow and obey Jesus our Lord whilst praising God in heaven. Now remember, faith can mean believe in myself or self-confidence. For others, it is to adopt others' ideas, to trust their theories. It can also mean to trust someone else and indeed we trust the object of our faith, Jesus. What did you discover in today's text? What truths could you affirm? What promises could you claim? What commands should you obey? Your assignment for next time is to read Luke chapter 19 in different versions. And then visit this website Download 
And as you do so, compile your insights, queries, and observations to share with others.